Hi everyone, in today's video I'm gonna talk about the Bitbucket pipeline. What is it, why use it and how to use it. For this video I'm gonna use as an example a Lambda function project with AWS service and API gateway in order to map our HTTP request to our Lambda function. To understand Bitbucket pipelines, first you need to understand what is CI-CD because they are strongly related. So CI stands for continuous integration and continuous delivery. CI is the process of merging new code changes continuously to the main branch and CD in the other hand is the process to get the code changes to production. Automating this process allows high speed delivery which brings several benefits for your team, stakeholders and the product. Bitbucket pipelines allow you to use CI/CD to automate most of or all the development process when it comes to ship your code changes to production. Bitbucket pipelines allow you to set automated steps to execute in different moments of pushing the code changes into the repository. So, let's imagine a scenario where you have finished developing a new feature locally and now you want to send these changes to production. Probably you will create a pull request to the main branch and merge it when everything is okay in terms of code review and tests. Once you do that, you can set a pipeline to execute in different moments when you create your pull request and when merge it to the main branch. The first moment, the pipeline can be triggered to build the project, execute the automated tests, code analysis, etc. And the second part, when merge the pull request to the main branch, triggering a pipeline to build and deploy the code changes to some infrastructure. Each pipeline's step can fail, which means that something went wrong and you have to check it maybe add you something before trying to execute again. So, how can you create a pipeline? You can build up a pipeline through a YAML file with all the details that you desire. So now I'm gonna show you how to create and set up a pipeline. First of all, you need to create a Bitbucket repo like this one and enable the pipeline feature for it. It's disabled by default. So, what you have to do is click on repository settings, scroll down, click on settings and enable pipelines. After that, you have to clone down your repository for your workstation and open the project using some code editor that you prefer. So, now I'm gonna create a Bitbucket pipeline using this Bitbucket pipeline YAML file. You have to create this file with this very same name, which is going to have all the pipeline steps and configurations. In the file, in the first line, I'm gonna define which image this pipeline will use. It can be a Docker image or in this case Node.js, which means that for everything we declare in this file, we will use Node.js. So let's set a, an image using Node.js version 20. Awesome. So now I'm gonna create my definitions, which will have a list of reusable steps. So definitions, steps and I'm gonna create my first step and here the order doesn't matter you can create whatever step you want and after that you are going to invoke these steps on the pipelines so the first step is going to be install dependencies for this step I'm gonna name it with install dependencies and after name it I'm gonna create a script for it script and the first one is going to log what is going on on in this step so installing dependencies and the second one is is going to be 
the command to install the dependencies. So in this case, I'm using a Node.js project with this index.js, just exporting one function that returns a string. So npm install. After that, I'm gonna create another step, which is going to be run tests. So I'm gonna name it as well. So run tests and I'm gonna create a script for this step. So the first script is going to be log the step information. So running tests and the second one is going to be the command to run the step. So npm run test. This command I'm using from the package scripts, which I, as you can see, I have this test script here, logging some string. And in the real project, you can execute your automated tests right here. But for this example, let's just log some string. And that's it for the run test step. So after that, I'm going to create another step, which is going to be zip lambda function. So in order to deploy our project files to AWS Lambda function service, before deploying it, we need to zip all of our project files. So that's what this script is going to do. So let's name it and let's define some scripts for this step. The first one, I'm gonna install a zip package. So apt get update and apt get install minus y zip. And the second one, I'm gonna use this zip package. So zip, and I'm gonna name the output for this command. So the output is going to be a zip file. So lambda function dot zip. And the next parameter for this zip command is going to be the input. So all my project files. And in order to the deploy step use the zip file. This zip function, zip lambda function step needs to declare a artifact as a step output. So artifact is going to be our lambda function zip file. Great. Um, so for the last step, let's say step deploy to AWS and I'm gonna name it deploy to AWS and let's define as well some scripts so script and for my first script I'm going to use an external pipeline provided by Atlassian this external pipeline is going to do all the work for us it just requires some variables, some AWS credentials. So pipe Atlassian slash AWS Lambda deploy and let's define a version 0.2.1. And now let's define some variables. The first variable is going to be AWS access key IG. And for this variable, I'm going to use a Bitbucket variable with the same name. Heading back to our Bitbucket repository, you can define these Bitbucket variables and use it in your Bitbucket pipeline, clicking on repository settings, scrolling down and repository variables. You can create these variables with 
secured and without being secured so once you create as secured you can see the value you can just delete or update this value and you can create without secured which you can see here in AWS the full region so here you can get the value copy the value and do whatever you want so heading back to our code let's define the rest of our variables the next one is going to be AWS secret access key which is going to be the same value for our Bitbucket variable. These AWS credentials you can get in your AWS account. So the next AWS default region, which is going to be the same Bitbucket variable name. Great. Uh, for the next one, I want to say function name which is going to be our aws function name node example test and you can find this information right here in your aws account clicking on aws lambda service and that's here function name node example test for the next variable i'm gonna say command update and the last one is going to be our zip file name. So zip file, which is going to be our previous step artifact. Just copy and paste here. Great. So now after defining my steps, my definitions, I need to define the pipelines. So pipelines and for any new commit in the repository, I want to execute a default pipeline just to install the dependencies and execute the tests to make sure that our new commit in the repository won't break the service. So default and for this default pipeline, I'm going to define two steps. The first one is going to be install dependencies and as you can see here I'm using the very same name of this tab in my definitions so install dependencies and I can invoke it here in my pipelines so the next step and the last one for this pi pipeline is going to be run tests so now I want to define a new pipeline for each time new commit changes goes to the main branch so branch main and i'm going to define four steps the first two steps going to be the same of my previous pipeline so main is going to have install the dependencies and run test steps and also our zip step and the last one is going to be our deploy step deploy to aws let's format this file with eml formatter and let's save it without formatting because for these eml files the formatting is very important which means that if i modify this name in the same level of step i'm gonna get a error an error so we have to keep it very well structured we, we have to keep it formatted so let's save it and as you can see our current lambda function is returning this node.js aws uh, lambda string i'm gonna refresh it and we want to see our deploy with some new information so let's say we have to let's modify this string new deploy let's save it and as you can see i'm changing this code in a different branch called test so git branch you can see that i'm in a test branch 
commit these changes kit commit minus m so char or fit add pipeline and let's push this commit git push that's great so let's head back to our bitbucket repository so let's go to the main page and click on pipelines and as you can see some new pipeline is now executing so let's click on it and you can see what is going on as you can see here we have this pipeline section showing us all the steps executing so here we have two steps install dependencies and run tests you can find these names right here in our bitbucket yaml file so install dependencies run tests and this pipeline was triggered by here by our the full pipeline which has these two steps and we got success here so let's now create a pull request to our test branch to our main branch and uh, let's add this title click on create pull request let's merge it that's perfect we get we got success to merge the pull request let's go to our pipelines and now as you can see we are executing a new pipeline for this time our main pipeline as you can see here our each time we got some new commit to our main branch we are going to trigger this pipeline to execute these four steps so let's click on the pipeline and as you can see here in the pipeline section is it's executing all of our four steps so the first one was install dependencies the second one run test after that zip lambda function and for the last one we are deploying the code changes to aws lambda function so let's wait it and if you click on each of these pipeline steps you can see our some information some log informations and also our log as you can see here we are logging running tests so you can log here very useful information and with the pipeline just finished the deploy let's go to our aws lambda service let's refresh this page and as you can see the last modified was 28 minutes ago let's click on our pipeline and the aws lambda function provides a code editor for our functions so as you can see here we got the code changes here so let's go to our api endpoint to our aws lambda function you can find this api endpoint clicking on your api gateway and it's here public you can access it and we got this string which is exactly the same string we changed here in the index.js so that's it guys i hope this video was useful and i'll see you in the next video bye